Hey guys, my name is Demon Drizzly, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the radial blur tool in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all staying safe and staying creative. So this is the next quick Photoshop tutorial in the series I'm making, and today we're going to be covering the radial blur tool. So what is radial blur and when should we use it? So radial blur is really good for adding motion to your images and also to draw the attention of the viewers towards the center and the subject of the photo. And usually I would use this technique on photos that are symmetrical and have lots of leading lines that leads towards the subject such as walkways, tunnels or footbridges for example. So yeah, let's jump into Photoshop and I'll quickly show you how to use this effect. All right, so here's the shot we're gonna be editing which I've already color graded using Lightroom. The first thing we're going to do is to crop it. I'm going to be cropping it to 4x5 ratio because it's going to be posted to Instagram and you want to make sure that the delete crop pixels button is turned off. This lets you adjust your crop later on if you want to recrop again. Once you're happy with the crop, go to the layers panel and duplicate the layer. To do this, right click on the layer, click duplicate layer and then hit OK. We're duplicating the layer just in case we make a mistake and if you want to go back and reuse the original image later. Next, with the top layer selected, go to filter up the top and then blur and then radial blur. When this menu appears, you wanna select zoom for the blur method and then best quality. And I usually start off with about 25 as the amount and then hit okay. This is just the first test to see what the radial blur will look like with these settings. The loading time here will depend on the speed of your computer. If it's too slow, you can do these initial tests using either good or draft for the quality. Now looking at this, it's looking not bad. But if you see on the right side here, the blur is not lined up correctly with the perspective of the image. It's looking like the center needs to be moved upwards a little bit. So let's try it again. Instead of clicking undo, I usually just create a new duplicate of the base layer just in case we end up actually wanting to use the one we just did. All right, same process as before. Go to filter, blur, and then radial blur. And now try moving the blur center slightly upwards. This panel is quite sensitive, so just try to move it slowly and carefully. Okay, so it's still not looking perfect yet. So we're just gonna have to keep trying and moving the blur center up and down incrementally until we get the correct perspective. If you made a mistake and you wanna go back completely to the beginning, you can hold down control or command when the radial blur menu is open and then the cancel button will change to a default button, which you can click and then try again. All right, so after trying a few times, we finally found the correct perspective and the right blur center. Next, you can also try testing what different amounts of blur will look like. So first I tried with 100 to see what it looked like with it at maximum. I thought it looked okay, but it was a bit too much for the whole image. So I also duplicated the layer again and tried it at 50. I liked what it looked like on the left side at 100, but I also liked what it looked like on the right side at 50. So I had the idea of combining two different amounts on one image. This is completely subjective and up to you. So to mix the two layers together, I added a layer mask to the layer with the 100 amount, and then I selected the paintbrush tool, made sure the color is black and the layer mask is selected. Then you wanna right click to adjust the brush size and hardness. I went for a larger brush with no hardness and then paint the whole right side black. This will reveal the layer with the 50 amount below it. And because we are using a layer mask, if you make a mistake, you can just paint white onto the layer mask to bring back what you've erased. All right, so now we've got the blur happening. Let's bring back the train. So it looks like we're moving at the same speed as a train. To do this, select the background layer and then draw a rectangle around the train. Then right click and hit layer via copy. Next, with that new layer selected, select the magic wand tool and then click select subject at the top. This will hopefully select the subject automatically for you, but if not, you can tidy it up using the polygonal lasso tool. Hold shift while selecting to add or hold option or alt to subtract. Once you've got your selection, then click the layer mask button to erase everything around the train. The last step here is to remove the blur that's coming out from the train and tidy up the area around the train. To do this, you can either try to use the content aware fill tool or the clone snap tool. For the content aware fill tool, select the part you want to get rid of and then right click and hit fill. Make sure content aware is selected and hit OK. If that doesn't work, let's try with the clone snap tool. Hold Alt or Option to select a sample from another part of the image and then paint the areas you want to cover up. Just keep doing this until it looks clean all around the train. Finally, I just painted lightly with a white brush around the edge of the train on the layer mask and we're done. Take it back to Lightroom for a final color grade and then export. So now let's just try it with another example. This image is much more simpler to do. All we gotta do is just try to find the right perspective and the correct blur center. So repeating what we've learned from the previous image, duplicate the base layer and then go to filter, blur, 
radial blur and then adjust the amount, the quality and the blur center until you're happy with the right combination. And finally, because the subject here is much more simpler to work with, all you have to do now is to create a layer mask for this top layer and then hit the paintbrush tool and make sure the color is black. And then with a small brush with no hardness, we're just gonna paint on top of the person until the person's not blurred anymore. And that's it, pretty simple, right? Let's now look at the before and now the after. You can see by just doing this effect, it really draws the eyes right to the subject and adds another layer to your images that have strong leading lines. Alright guys, I hope you found that tutorial useful. Let me know again what you think of the short tutorial series and if you like them or if you prefer longer ones or what you want to learn next from me, drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you drop a like and if you want to see more coming soon, make sure you hit subscribe. As always, thanks so much for watching and remember to always push your creativity to the next level. Bye!